Today we're going to be taking a look at the laser crosshair solution that is developed for the Creality Falcon 2 and it fits both the 22 watt and 40 watt version. It also fits both of those models with or without my fume extractor nozzles. Now if you've been working with laser cutting and engraving for a while now you've definitely come across laser crosshairs on most machines but for some reason the Creality Falcon 2 does not have one. Without the laser crosshairs, it makes it really difficult and inconvenient to align and position your parts because you have no reference point. This is also true in the rotary mode when you're trying to align your laser with the highest point on a cylinder, and again, you have no reference point. This is where the laser crosshairs comes to the rescue, but there is a little bit of setup involved because of course, you're going to have to square up the laser crosshairs with your machine, and you're gonna have to give your software some offset information, and that's basically the X and Y distance from the center of the crosshairs to the center of your laser. I promise it's not that difficult. I'm gonna walk you guys through it, so let's get started. First, we'll have a look at what's in the package, and so you get your laser crosshairs module with a push button switch that's got a USB cable on the end, you get all the hardware you need, and a bracket. I'll begin by demonstrating the installation on the 22 watt module, and we'll do this over top of the fume extractor. If you've got my fume extractor, there are two M3 by 8 socket head cap screws on the front and one on the back left hand side that you can remove. The new bracket comes with the exact same hardware, so you can either use the new stuff or reuse the old stuff. The bracket will fit directly over top of the fume extractor, and again, we're going to be using these M3 by 8 socket head cap screws, and we're just going to be replacing the ones that we just removed. Remember that this is just a small plastic bracket, so you don't have to go overboard with how tight you make these screws. Now, if you don't have my fume extractor, that's okay, it still fits. You're going to be removing the same three screws, the two in the front, the one in the back left-hand side. Now, the ones you would have removed would have been flat countersunk screws, and instead you're gonna be using the screws that come with the kit to install the bracket in those same holes. If you have the 40 watt module, it's the exact same thing. Two screws on the front, one on the back left hand side, all of them M3 by eight socket head cap screws. Remove the old ones, fit the bracket on top, and again, reuse the old screws or use the new screws that came with your new bracket. And from a top view, this is what it will look like. You'll notice the one on the far right hand side as a half slotted open hole and the screw will just clamp down on that end of the bracket. And if you have the 40 watt module with no fume extractor, it's the same three screws, two in the front, one in the back left hand side. Those again will be flat head countersunk screws. Remove those, replace them with the three socket head cap screws that come with the kit. Next, we've got the power switch, which has double sided tape pre-applied to the back side. You can remove the backing and you can stick the switch to the front of your bracket. Then you can slip the laser crosshair module into the front mounting ring. The other side of your switch will have the USB-C connector and this is where your laser crosshairs will get power from. It's gonna plug directly into the USB-C port in the top of your laser module. Then you can snug up your bracket, you don't want it fully tightened down, and optionally install the zip ties to hold in the cables. Now we'll get into aligning your laser crosshair module and this first method is the easiest way but not necessarily the most accurate. For this method, all you need is a square or some kind of a bar, basically anything with a 90 degree angle. And so in this case, I'm gonna be using the square and I'm gonna take a wooden workpiece here with a straight edge. I'll take the front edge of the square, align it with the front edge of the workpiece, and I'll butt up the gantry to the vertical edge of the square. And this is just gonna make sure that the workpiece edge is in alignment with the gantry. And so if we look at this from a top view, we can see that the gantry face and the edge of the workpiece are perfectly parallel with one another. Then with the machine power on, we can turn on our laser crosshairs. And the first thing we need to look out for here is to make sure that the crosshairs are focused. And this is what it looks like when it's out of focus. You got quite a blurry line. So up on the laser, we can then begin to turn the focusing cap. The goal is to get a reasonably sharp line and then you can manually move the laser head forward and align the laser crosshairs with the edge of the wood. Now, in most cases, the first time when you turn that laser crosshairs on, it won't be out of focus and it should look something like this. In which case, then we can go back and align the laser with the front edge of the wood. To do that, I would recommend turning the body of the laser instead of the lens cap since it's already focused. And so in this clip here, you can see that I'm turning the body by the top portion sticking out of the bracket so that my fingers don't bump or accidentally turn the lens at the bottom. At this point, your laser crosshairs should be perfectly aligned with your frame. However, the positional accuracy of the center of the crosshairs 
could be within a few millimeters of the nominal offsets which we'll talk about in the calibration section of this video. If your only concern is getting your workpiece square and positional accuracy is not that important to you, then you can go ahead and set up a workpiece and get started and all you would need to do is align the bottom left corner of your workpiece with the laser crosshairs. Then you can move your laser head along the x-axis and make sure the edge of your workpiece stays in alignment with the laser crosshairs and if it doesn't you can make those minor adjustments and then do the same thing along the y-axis to double check. Having workpiece hold down clips that provide some friction make these minor adjustments very easy and then of course keep your workpiece in place when it's all done. Now if you need more precise positional accuracy than the few millimeters that I just mentioned, we can go ahead and get into calibration. To get started with the calibration, we'll hop into Laser GRBL, and the reason I'm starting with this software is because it's free and it's very easy to use. In my previous video guide for the Creality Falcon, I also used Laser GRBL for that video, so there's also some consistency here between my videos. And so the first thing we need to do is import our Laser GRBL configuration, and then we're gonna do a quick modification to our blink button, so we can right click that button, hit edit button, and we're gonna be using this button to draw a straight line across our X axis. So we can just type in G1 X60, and that should produce a 60 millimeter long line along the X axis when we press that button. I just wanna show you that you can do the same thing in Lightburn. Lightburn is a much more powerful software, which as you can see, allows you to draw directly in the software. And so we can just draw a horizontal line and we can change its width setting to 60 millimeters and then we can change all of the associated speed and power settings over on the right hand side with that line. So I got the speed set to 1000 and the max power set to 6%. For this calibration procedure, I don't want the laser to home itself, so I'm just going to use the drop down menu and select current position, put the job origin in the bottom left hand corner, and I could run that horizontal line. And to do that, we can use the modified blink button in laser GRBL, like I just showed you, or the start button in Lightburn, and we're gonna get a horizontal line along our X axis. This is going to provide us with a reference edge to line up our laser crosshairs, which is going to be even more accurate than the first method that I showed you, where you created a physical reference edge, where I was using the square to do that. Here you'll see me manually move the laser head up to the engraved line, and the horizontal line of my crosshairs should line up with the engraved line, and that's the goal here. Coincidentally, mine is pretty close right from the start. I got a little bit lucky here, so if yours isn't aligned, I would turn the laser crosshairs module by the body, not by the lens at the bottom. Then it'll look something like this, and we'll know that our crosshairs is perfectly squared up with our frame. Now we can move our laser module over to a clean spot on our piece of scrap, and just make sure that your laser crosshairs are somewhere on that wood. Back in Laser GRBL, I'm going to press the glow button to establish a new 00, zero origin at this position. And then what we can do is load in just a simple square. So this one is actually a 100 by 100 millimeter square, but we're going to resize that in a second. And we're not going to engrave the whole thing. So over in the size section, I'm just going to change the width to 50 millimeters and the height is linked to that. So it's also going to automatically change to 50. And then in our offset section, the X, we're going to leave at negative 55 millimeters for the 22 watt module. And the Y, we're going to change to negative 43 millimeters. These are the nominal offsets for the 22 watt module. And the 40 watt module will be the same procedure, but it will have different values for those offsets. These nominal offset values will be available in the video description down below. They'll also be available on the documentation on my website, and they'll also be available with the documentation that comes with the product when you purchase it. And so here you can see the square has been offset negative 55 millimeters in the X direction and negative 43 in the Y direction. And now, just like we edited the blink button, we're gonna edit the frame button. So I just right clicked on frame, I clicked edit, and I'm gonna change the power to 6%. So rather than waste time and engrave this black square in its entirety, when I click frame, it'll just run the outline and leave a mark. Now, if you're using Lightburn, it's even easier because again, you can draw directly in the software. So I'll use the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle up in the top left. I'll unlock the aspect ratio. I'll change the width to 50 millimeters and the height to 50 millimeters. So we have a square again. And just like when we drew the horizontal line along the X axis, my power and speed settings are 1000 millimeters per minute, power at 6%, 
We're going to start from the current position and the job origin is in the bottom left hand corner. Now up in the device settings, we are going to enable our pointer offset and we're going to enter in our same nominal offsets that I showed you in laser GRBL. So negative 55 millimeters in the X, negative 43 millimeters in the Y. And again, this is for the 22 watt module. And I'll repeat myself one more time. The 40 watt module will have the exact same procedure, but different values. And those values can be found in the video description down below on the documentation on my website and the documentation that comes with the kit when you purchase it. Now in laser GRBL, we can press frame and in Lightburn we can press start and the result will be an engraved square. 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. The laser module will return back to the origin and now we can see the difference between where our crosshairs is positioned and the bottom left hand corner of that square. And what you'll likely notice is that the alignment of the crosshairs is nice, but the position is off. And this is what I had mentioned earlier about the positional accuracy of our crosshairs if you don't go through this calibration process. Now what we do is use the built-in adjustment with the lens and very carefully reposition the lens to point the laser crosshairs directly at the corner of our square. Now it's very important that when you do this, you are only moving the lens and you're not pushing the entire gantry or laser head around. Those have to stay completely still. Once you've got it lined up, the position of your crosshairs now accurately matches the offsets that you entered in your software. Now, optionally, what you can do here is you can find a new spot on your scrap piece of wood, run the exact same job again. And this time, if the crosshairs ends up at the bottom left hand corner of your square at the end of the job, then you've validated your work and your offsets are perfect. But again, that's just optional if you want to double check. Now, I know people tend to skip through these videos, so I'll repeat myself one final time. If you got the 40 watt module, the procedure is the same, but the offset values will be different. One final thing I like to do here is mark the orientation of my laser crosshairs with a Sharpie. So I mark the top and front of the module so that I can maintain the same orientation when we switch it over to the rotary position. By maintaining the same orientation, we'll just generally have to make smaller adjustments when we go to switch positions. But that's it. If you're ready to laser some flat things, I've now shown you in laser GRBL where to enter in those offset values and in Lightburn, how to enable the pointer offset and also where to enter those same offset values. Next, we're gonna take a look at using the laser crosshairs with the rotary module. And in my opinion, it's very important that we calibrate it for this situation because we do not want any offset between the crosshairs and our laser in the Y axis. So for this, we need to move our laser crosshair module into the rotary position. So we're going to loosen off the bracket, pull up on the laser crosshair and insert it into one of the two slots. Now the forward mole slot is for the 40 watt module. And in this case, I'm demonstrating on the 22 watt module. So I'm gonna install it in the rearmost position. Now this is very important, so get it right or it won't work for you. We'll snug up the screw, but don't tighten it all the way down just enough that it doesn't slip through because we're going to have to turn the crosshairs again to align it. To get the crosshairs squared up and aligned in the rotary position, we can go back and use the same method I showed you earlier in laser GRBL by editing the blink button. I'm going to add the G1 X60 command. And so when we press the blink button, a 60 millimeter line along the X axis will be engraved. Now, if you're using Lightburn, you're going to want to go back into the device settings and make sure at this point your enable pointer offset is off for this. I'll use the line tool in Lightburn to draw a 60 millimeter horizontal line, and then we can just press start in Lightburn. And that's going to do the same thing. It's going to engrave a 60 millimeter line along the X axis. You obviously want to make sure that you're doing this on a scrap piece of material, but when that line is done being engraved, the first goal would be to get the horizontal line of your laser crosshairs parallel with the engraved line. To do this first step, I would twist the body of the laser crosshairs module. Once the lines are parallel, the next goal is to get them to overlap. And to do that, that's when I would use the adjustment in the lens. And while you're making these adjustments, it's very important that you do not disturb the position of your laser head or your gantry, because if you accidentally do, you have to start this procedure over again. And so you can see here, I made a small adjustment to the position of my laser crosshairs using the lens. And now the horizontal line of my crosshairs and the engraved line are completely overlapping one another, which means I've achieved a zero offset in the Y direction. Now I'm gonna manually move my laser head over to a fresh new spot on my piece of scrap material. And in 
Laser GRBL, I'm going to press the globe button to reestablish this new position as the 00, zero origin. And I'm going to open that black square that I showed you guys earlier. This time when we go to set up the square, I'm going to change the Y offset to zero and the X offset remains at negative 55 millimeters for the 22 watt module. And for this rotary calibration, I'm going to do the same thing as we did before with the framing. We're going to edit the framing button, set the power to a value that's going to leave a mark on the wood. So I'm going to go with 6%. I'll save that. And then if I were to press the framing button, the outline of that square would be drawn. And in Lightburn, we can do something similar. So we can use the rectangle tool in Lightburn to draw a rectangle. We can edit its dimensions to be 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, the same as the square that I just showed you in uh, laser GRBL. Go into the device settings. We're gonna enable the pointer offset. Same offsets as before, negative 55 millimeters in the X, zero in the Y. Again, this is for the 22 watt module. On the right hand side, our power is at 6%, speeds at 1000. We're gonna start from our current position and our job origin is in the bottom left hand corner. In laser GRBL, we'd press the frame button. In Lightburn, we'd press the start button and the result will be a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter engraved square. When the job is complete, the laser head returns back to the origin and you can see we need to make a small adjustment in the X direction. To get the laser crosshairs to overlap with the bottom left hand corner of this engraved square, I'll be very carefully pushing on the lens to move the crosshairs over so that it overlaps. While I'm doing this, I'll be very careful not to disturb the position of the laser head or the gantry, because if you do accidentally move the laser head or the gantry, you're going to have to engrave a new square and start over again. So now you're ready to process some rotary jobs, and if you align the horizontal line of your crosshairs with the highest point on your cylinder, you can be sure that your working laser is also perfectly aligned with that highest point on your round object. One final thing to remember is that if you use laser GRBL to do this process, go back and reverse the changes you made to your blink and your framing button. The next time you go to use those, you don't want to be surprised when your blink button is drawing horizontal lines or your framing button is drawing squares on your good work pieces. The too long didn't watch recap is that if you install the laser crosshairs, then at minimum, you need to align it with your machine. You can input the nominal offset values into your software and your work pieces will be easy to square up, but the position of your designs may be a few millimeters off from the center of your laser crosshairs acting as your origin. If you need better accuracy than that, you'll need to go back to the calibration portion of this video and calibrate your laser crosshairs to get perfect positioning. Always remember to exercise caution when working with lasers, avoid direct eye exposure from the laser crosshairs module, and always wear laser safety glasses when working with lasers. I'll put links to everything in the video description below, including a link to a written guide on my website, embracemaking.com. Please go check out my website, embracemaking.com to find more awesome laser engraving and 3D printing upgrades. It's the best way to support my work and get something useful in return. Thanks for watching.